In this video, I'm gonna share with you what I actually packed in my day pack for a long ski touring day. So stay tuned. Now, Grand Sassier was a really big dream of mine. Ever since I arrived in the Tarantins Valley in 2014 to work, I saw this massive peak and it had always been my dream to ski it in the winter. I've climbed it in the summer and uh, you know, a few days ago, I managed to actually match the team with the weather conditions and the route and uh, we actually managed to get up. So in today's video, I'm gonna explain to you what I actually carried for a long ski day tour, why I've carried and, uh, and some secrets now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my bag. I've pretty much got a 28 litre bag. It's an Osprey Moot Test, you can see. What I like about it is I've got a frame on the back, so it actually sits away from my back, so I don't actually get too sweaty. Now, another thing that I find really good is that I've got a helmet cover, I've got a rope pull as well, and I've got ice axe holders. Okay, so it's a really light back. It doesn't add to, you know, to the weight so much. Some bags can be a lot heavier too. So really all my gear that I use to going up for long day tours or even short day tours, I really want everything to be functional, light and reliable. Now I've got to make sure that everything I use is working well and it's pretty in good condition. And I think that's really important. Before you do anything, make sure that you've got the right equipment and you know how to use it. So this is the Mute Test Bag Osprey. Um, I have pocket at the front, which I always keep some light snacks in at the top so it's really accessible. And then I literally will pack like the rescue gear from the bottom and layer up from to the top. So I'll just put that one down there. Now, going on to the equipment, um, I've just got a really nice light sort of mountaineering hat with a GoPro mount. Um, I've got some skins, just mohair skins, okay, pretty light. Um, the Coltex ones, I've used them before so I know that they're really going to stick really well. Now, I carry obviously my transceiver and then I've got my shovel and and probe. Now you can see why a video why I carry these and the reasons why and I'll put it into a link down in the description below so click on the description and that will actually I'll actually explain the reasons why I carry these three. Um, the alligator one from Mammoth, the, the probe and also my Arva Neo. So click on that video and watch that video. So that's essential avalanche gear, really important. Now I have my ski crampons, which is really good because in spring conditions you can get a little bit of wind blown and some crud and you actually need to be able to cross that. So it's easy, I know how to put them on and light. I've actually got some Dina Fit um, ski touring bindings there. Now, because it's on glacier travel, everything's a little bit more trickier. Um, so I often, I don't teach on a glacier, that's actually a guys department. Um, but the other day we're actually, it was a big route, it was nearly 2,000 metres up and we got up to 3,742 metres above sea level. So it's our third largest mountain in the area of the Tarantes. So we were doing glacier uh, travel, so it's a really different sort of section and category with glaciers. Um, I've just got my normal climbing harness now. You can actually get a really lighter climbing harness and you can actually save a lot of weight on that too. Um, I also carry here, I've just got a Petzl Glacier Light um, Ice Axe, uh, really good. I actually quite like this cover over the top of the spike. Um, it's 50 centimetres and I just find that that's kind of perfect for walking in um, and it's just really light so it doesn't add up too much to the weight. Now also on the Glacier Travel, um, I've just got a 30 metre rope, um, it's quite heavy, 1.2k, um, it's just I got it from Decathlon, it's not too expensive, um, but more importantly it's actually dry treated, so you can actually use it on and off the rock on Glacier Train, um, so it's just a, it's a basic rope really, you can actually, you know, get a lot lighter ropes and Glacier specified, so you can actually save 
a lot of weight on better ropes. And also um, you can actually put it in a bag in a sheath ready for your use. Um, with, the, with the rope, hopefully we don't use it, but you never know with crevasse. Then I come on to two, a couple of ice screws. I've just got uh, 21 centimeters, the 18 there. Crevasse rescue kit, just that one there. And then I'll just bring some slings and, uh, and a belay as well, and another carabiner. And more importantly, especially for Grand Sassier, the actual point um, is actually quite windblown and we found it that it was really important to have crampons. So um, just brought some crampons, some boot crampons. Now they're just the Petzl hybrid ones. Now, um, can you just see there? So I just want to say thank you to Dave Sells. I saw his video and um, I purchased these on his recommendation. I'll put a link of Dave Sell's video and he will actually explain all about the crampons because that's his, you know, his, his job and his professional, he's a mountain guide. So click on to that. Now, if you do find this video some great value and you're learning knocks, please, please, please just give us a thumbs up. It's free and it really helps the algorithm on the channel and it helps me to grow. Now, moving on, on to uh, rescue gear now, which I find really important. Now, all of this will change, the whole pack will change depending on what I do. Um, it was a long day, so I really wanted to be having an easy and lighter pack. Now, I'll have everything sort of in a bit of a bag here. Um, and in the bags, you'll find like a multi-tool really handy. Then um, I've got a scraper as well. And also some cord in here. So if you have any brake failure or any sort of equipment failure, I'll be able to do something with that. I carry at least four, if not six, ski straps because they're really good. So if you have like a skin that doesn't actually stay on the ski, then I can strap it all round and uh, that's really good too. Um, some wax, some, uh, cold wax. Now when you're going up through such a big variant, so a 2000 meter, I'm always carrying a couple of waxes just in case the snow sort of cut sticks to the ski so I've got a cold wax and speaking of wax this is actually my golden weapon um, I've actually done a video on this the the glip gloop sorry I always say it wrong the gloop stopper wax now this really helps to put actually put on the skins because if it suddenly sort of warms up drastically this the snow can actually get on under your skins and it's a lot heavier so click on that below I'll put all the links in the description below have a watch at that video then obviously duct tape you can't do without I've also got a, a buff a knife that cuts through rope I've got spare batteries just in case anyone's batteries are dying and I just love these these are like hand warmers and foot warmers and it's just in case of a rescue or we have to hang around too long then that actually keeps um, all your extremities nice and warm so that will be in my sort of rescue kind of bag. And then I'll go on to sort of my first aid, which I actually put in here. And this is where I find my head torch, really important um, because sometimes timing, you can't always get it right. So um, yeah, without a doubt, I'll go for a light sort of pets or head torch. Now, bivy bag. Now this is so important and it always depends on what I'm doing. So if I'm teaching off-piste or ski touring, and I'm you know, in charge and responsible of some clients, then I will actually take this. Now this is a Bivy four-man shelter. It's a super light, 333 grams. Just love it. And um, I can actually put the whole group in and keep the group really warm while rescue's coming. So that's really important. Now, if I'm skiing just for myself, like the other day when we went up to Sassia, then I'll only take this sort of really small emergency sort of blanket this one here it's like an emergency bivy and it's brilliant it's really light you can get this on amazon it's not expensive at all and it just comes out to like a, a windproof and waterproof sort of foil sleeping bag so i really recommend that so i always take that no matter what in my bag now in here too will come the first aid kit i'll do another video with all of this 
Um, the biggest thing for me actually inside here is actually the blot, blood clotting powder and um, yeah, it's, I will do another video, but it's really important to have a first aid so you can actually really um, help with major bleeds, any breaks, um, you know, some pain, whatever, you, you've, you're covered. So just a small one, but we have to be light, um, but it also has to be functional. Okay, so here we go, coming on to navigation. Um, I've got a satellite phone here, so I can actually take calls, um, phone out, so which is really good, the Thuya Light XT. Um, I always, always carry a map. Um, I'm really old school, but I just think it's better not to rely on electronics all the time. And if you can read a map, then um, so much better as well. So you can actually use them both together. So map and compass is there. Um, obviously I have my phone here and also with smartphones you also find that the batteries don't really last. So I just sort of take a battery charger as well, which is really important. Now filming on such a big distance and a big day, I can't actually take my nice camera. So I will actually just use a little gold pro from there. Now in the mountains, keeping hydrated and topping up with fuel is such a big necessity, it really is. And that's what really helped me to get nearly up to 2000 meters um, above and, and climbing for nearly seven hours. So I just wanna to talk to you about that. So minimum, I always, I always sort of carry a liter of water. Um, because it's springtime, I might even carry a liter and a half like I did the other day. Um, I will often take this. This is amazing um, for spring. Um, it's actually got a filter. So if I'm coming down the mountain after a long day, then I can actually, you know, put some mountain water in here, swivel it, give it a wash, and it's actually really safe to drink. So really important, and it's also very light, and that comes into a litre. Very good, Catadonian, be free. So I always keep drinking that. Sometimes I might take like a sports pill, um, just to really get the electrolytes back into my body. Now when I'm climbing and going up for like long days, um, you know, for like seven hours a day, it's really important to keep grazing. For me, I find like my body works so much better if I keep eating all the way. And I'll have different snacks. Um, I'm really keen and fond of this kind, sort of gluten-free bars. You've got different ones here with high protein that you can just nibble on. You keep them in your pocket or on top of your bag. You know, I've got three or four of those. Um, for big, big days and ones that I want to use, I've also take some energy gels. Um, I actually used four of these um, the other day because um, I was touring and moving for 11 hours. Um, these are really good. You can get them really cheap on the internet um, from Decathlon, 32 grams, so they're not too heavy. And just before like a heavy stint of like going up, you know, take one of these and that will give you enough energy and, uh, and sugar to get you to the top. I also take my brilliant mountain food special weapon um, yes yeah, I make um, energy balls as well which I will make a video of so you know keep an eye out um, a video of how I make these will come out very soon so I'm always grazing and topping up and I also on a long day I will take a sandwich or something that I'm used to something with protein like tuna cheese and that will help me to have my energy for going up the hill now Going on to layers very, really, really quickly. Um, I've got the layers all sort of here. Let's start. So if I'm mountaineering, I'll just have a shell. I sort of have mountaineering pants. Really important is to make sure that you've got the inside gaiter protection. So if you're using boot crampons, it will actually save your trousers. Um, just really lightweight, they're Berghaus, but I've got some vents on the sides and I just love that. So I will keep those on me and I've got pockets on, on the legs as well so I can carry the snacks. Um, mid, I wear a sort of a, a merino light layer like flower underneath and then I'll have a mid, mid layer jacket like this odd low one as well. And then when I get to the top of the mountain or if it gets cold, I always take my down jacket, sort of a mid layer down jacket. That's always in my bag without fail. 
Now over that I have just a really light mountaineering shell. Um, it will just be a three layer Gore-Tex and uh, wind stopper and that will really keep me warm and it just takes off the wind off you but make sure that you've got vents underneath so you can actually really breathe in the layers. Now I always take one of these, my mum actually bought me this one and I've had it for years, I love it. Um, it's just literally a, a merino sort of under layer hat that I can just put in underneath my helmet or any time and you can just scrunch it up. It's really, really small and light um, but it keeps you warm. So that would be there. Obviously a buff without a doubt, a headband, cotton headband. Now gloves is really important. Um, I always ski tour, um, ideally with a set of light gloves. These are just diamond, black diamond rope gloves. I carry these um, on me as I'm going up. And when I'm coming down, then this is what I'll use. I'll use some more insulated gloves for skiing down and um, this will keep my hands warm and just sort of a bit thicker. Uh, so I have two, always have two set of gloves and this is my secret weapon. Now for the people that have been skiing with me before and out in the back country, friends, they're these. Now these are amazing. It's a Gore-Tex um, mitt um, over mitt. So basically it, if I'm wearing my thin gloves and it suddenly get windy or cold then and I want some windproof or if I'm climbing you know I just put my over mitts over and that protects me and that keeps it so warm and they're nothing they're really light you can get them on Amazon and um, they have it. it just scrolls up really small and when I'm teaching and guiding I've always got these so I can always give them to some clients who are cold or haven't got the two sets of gloves and we're covered so I've got some gloves there. Sometimes I will bring some just normal liners too. And that's keeping my, my hands and my fingers really warm. Now, I wear goggles. Um, I normally just keep one pair of goggles. Depends on what the weather's gonna do. Might have to change the lens, maybe take two pairs. Um, but I often will find myself taking two sets of glasses, one for bad weather and one with category four to actually protect my eyes on a sunny day. So there we go. Also, what no one really talks about, um, I actually have a poo bag and uh, inside the poo bag, I will actually have some toilet paper and everything. So if I do need to go to the toilet, um, I can actually put the toilet paper inside there and all is covered. And that's about it. Now, this pack will change in different varying size depending on what I wanna do. Um, the other day, it was obviously a very big day, so um, you know it adds up to a lot of weight. As I've added it up, the total is, which is pretty pretty heavy, um, but it's always really good to balance up the weight and functionality. Now, I hope you really enjoyed the video. Please give me a thumbs up and think about subscribing to the channel if it really is value of you and we can both share the passion for the mountains. All the uh, videos uh, that I mentioned, I'll put in the link all in the description below. So please tap onto that. And if you do have any questions, please feel free, just drop me a message and it's a way that I can get in, in contact with you and can answer any of your questions. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.